down and join you. I, I, you know, we're, I was hoping we'd have more of a turnout tonight, but that's okay. This will be an intimate conversation <laughs> with the folks who are here. Maybe other people will join us as the evening goes on. Um, I'm Rachel Muse. I'm the director of the library. I've been here for just over a year, I think 14 months now. Um, and the, the library commission really uh, have long been talk about, talking about the library doing some strategic planning. Uh, um, and this is such a great time to do that because relatively new director, a lot of staff transition over the past few years. Uh, the library has been fully reopened uh, since the pandemic um, starting last June. Um, and we've slowly over that time loosened up our various uh, COVID protocols. So we're, we're finally at the point where it feels like we are back up and running like a library. Circulation numbers are, are back up to the, the numbers that they were before the library closed. Uh, we are seeing the after-school kids that we, we didn't see in those years. Uh, pro the programming's always going to look a little bit different going forward. Sometimes we, we do it in person, sometimes we do it on Zoom, sometimes we do a hybrid. Uh, so, um, so it seemed like a good time to kind of reflect and, and think about what, you, what do people want to see from the library going forward. So this meeting was our opportunity to just reach out to the community and say, do you want to sit down and have a conversation with us? And um, provide some, some input, some of your vision for what you'd like to see from the library, what, what's working, what's not working, um, just any ideas that people might have. So um, Ann Turkle's gonna lead this meeting. She is a uh, former Johnson State professor from former Johnson State College <laughs> <laughs> and a Waterbury resident of about six years, a Vermont resident for many years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm gonna let her kind of get the ball rolling with some, some questions. Excellent. Okay, well, I just want to say what a huge fan I am of the library. Uh, I figured out, I did a little calculation, I think there are at least six things that you offer that I take advantage of, and I really depend on it. I mean, it's just so great to have it here. I love it. <laughs> and I'm always curious uh, what other people find, uh, you know, most attractive what they do take advantage of. I know that I'm always surprised that there's more going on that I even, than I even realized. Uh, Rachel, before we started, gave me a printout of the newsletter. And my gosh, there is just an amazing array of things that are happening. And um, so I'm very admiring of all that and impressed and enjoy it. Um, what I would like to do is just talk. <laughs> uh, and I would, the thing that we are perhaps most interested in is your sense of what the library is already doing really well and what helps you, and then what you could see as opportunities, things that, that perhaps they're not doing yet or they could do more of, or, uh, you know, however it might work. So please just. Um, just join me. <laughs> you know it's going to be so noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They made me so up here, Teresa. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, okay. We're just getting started. Sorry. Yes. How do you get a newsletter and how often do they come out? Newsletters? Um, I, check in with me with your email address before uh, you go and I'll make sure you're on the mailing list. And we generally have two a month, one that promotes youth programming and one that promotes adult programming. And you get both <laughs> if you're on the list. Okay. Okay. And I forgot to say, one of the things I hope we, each of us would do is if you have a question or want to make a comment, please introduce yourself just very briefly so I know who you are. We know who you are. I'm Penny Hollabaugh, <laughs> and we live in Waterbury and have been here six years. And our daughter married a Vermonter, and so there's no place else to live. <laughs> Other people, what do you what do you love? What do you take advantage of? Um, I come to the writing group, which meets once a month. Uh, fabulous people in that group. It's really impressive. Um, I get books through interlibrary loan. That's one of the things that I have found is so useful. I'm just amazed at the things they can, they can chase down for me. Um, so, uh, you know, what has your experience been? Um, 
as a former teacher, I always like to say, don't make me call on you. <laughs> so uh, please, you know, uh, please just let us know, you know, what are you using the library for now? And yeah, any ideas that you have? Well, I'll say, um, so my name is Deanna King. I've lived in Waterbury now for just over a year. Um, and I'm also on the library commission um, because I love libraries and I wanted to get involved in my new community, so here I am. Um, and I'll say that my toddler and I have read hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of books from this library and all of which I would not have been able to read with her if I had had to purchase them myself. So I am forever in the debt of the library for being able to offer variety to my life <laughs> in the form of kids books. Um, it's such a service to everyone who can, um, can use them and share them and um, I know that it's doing so much good for her and her language development. So. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm uh, Teresa Wood, and um, I lived here my whole life and mm -hmm. have seen the evolution of our library mm -hmm. services. I used to live across the street um, and used to come to the library as a as a kid and uh, go upstairs to what I didn't what I now know was the historical society, but I thought it was always the library, and uh, you know we were able to kind of just like look at one of those things where you. To, Stereograph or something, um, something like that. It's a name similar to that, anyways. So uh, my usage has certainly evolved over the years from being a young kid. <laughs> um, what I use it for right now, honestly, is the connection to the um, digital books um, that I mm -hmm. listen to in my car when I'm driving all around. Wonderful. And I've. Uh, done that uh, quite a bit lately um, in the last couple of years and uh, I'm, ju I'm just grateful I, I got the newsletter now I signed up for the newsletter and it's uh, I'm grateful for all of the programming that the library does even though I'm not able to take advantage of it all I was like oh oh I wish I could do that <laughs> or I wish I could do Absolutely. that like the, the one with the uh, uh, poetry and um, music Pardon? Was it music? And it was poetry and yoga or something. Yeah, body, yeah. yeah. Body I thought, like, oh, that, that sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, so but you know, didn't fit with my schedule. But uh, it's not for the lack of wanting to participate. And there certainly is such a variety of things, both for adults and for youth. I, uh, I'm just uh, you know really proud of what our library does and yes. has and offers, and um, so glad to support it. <laughs> Uh, my name is Kaylee Martin. I'm the circulation assistant at the library. I've worked here for about a year now. Um, and what I love about the library is the people, from the faces I see all the time to somebody that I've maybe interacted with once or twice. I just love interacting with so many different people. And I love, I love seeing people come into the library and be like, oh, hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. Like, I like that it's a nice community space in that way. Um, and then like with my personal use of library, I love Libby. I love yeah. the audiobooks and the ebooks, and I, I use that resource personally so much and I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's kind of fun. I don't know if there's Rachel means the library director, but uh, we've been getting a lot of tourists lately mm -hmm. oh. um, who are passing through and visiting Waterbury, and they come to the library because it's a place to find a bathroom and a place to sit down and figure out the plan for the rest of their day. And they always say really nice things. They seem to really enjoy our library. So it's, we've kind of become this, this sort of de facto tourist stop for a lot of people, which has been really nice to see. That's great. Uh, that's funny because I, I just heard somebody this week, um, we were out weeding in front of the train station and somebody came by and they were looking for the community room to be open and of course it wasn't yet because it wasn't it wasn't late enough for Amtrak to be in but I will say that one of the people I was with said well why don't you go to the library <laughs> you could use a restroom there <laughs> we've, we've even got coffee now <laughs> Like, I would have never thought to told them to come to the library, but I was like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, this is one of the days, that, you know, the evenings it's open, so yeah. It's, yeah. So it was just funny that, that you said that, too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Maureen White. Um, I'm a library volunteer, also a president of the Friends of the Library Public Library. 
I absolutely love the library. Um, it started, I never came to the library. I was just always too busy working. Once I retired, I said, oh, I'm not going to buy books anymore. I can't afford it. So <laughs> I figured out the library. And I originally um, decided to be a volunteer because I knew they had a book sale. And my background was in finance. I thought they must need somebody to count the money, right? Well, <laughs> no, they didn't. But they said, would you like to shelve books? And I, Okay, I can do that. <laughs> I love that. I love seeing what people are reading. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, it's kind of a quiet space to, you know, it's kind of my zen, just make sure everything's nice and straight. And, um, I really love it. And so um, I read a, a good variety of books. I love the programming, the book club that they do. Um, just being around, being part of the community, the feel the kids in, making noise. And it's such a lovely place to be. And I find that I come here and sit upstairs with a quiet, was here today. I had to go through like a 50 page document and I'm you know, up there. Um, very quiet, it was, it was lovely. Um, and looking out, um, mm -hmm. the people who designed this building did a really good job. Yes. Um, so I just, I just find it's, it's a great place to be. Um, you know, making more friends in the community. And, and Maureen volunteers at the senior center as yeah, well. I'm the treasurer, too, so yes. I'm on the board. Um, yes. I spend a lot of time there, too. That's <laughs> yeah, I can hear her there. It's I know. Yeah, I just go like back and forth, back and forth, right? I do. I do. Um, but it's, it's a good place to you know, be a part of. Our granddaughter says that the library is so quiet and it smells good. Yeah, I, <laughs> it smells good. That's yes. funny. And she gets work done here. She mm -hmm. said that the reason that she comes is that if she goes home, she's d distracted by so many things, and mm -hmm. so she comes here to get things done. She's sixteen, done. so she's yeah. asking. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a I have a question. I'm sorry, I was a little bit late, but did somebody explain sort of is this part of a? Yeah. So, you know, like what's it part of? So so what this this is. Um, we are working on the library's first strategic plan since 2009. Um, we started off with a community survey that went out, and this meeting is just an opportunity for people who wanted to maybe share a little bit more beyond the survey or have a conversation with us to, to get their input in. Um, and uh, the next step will be to process all that information and start drafting the plan with a, uh, the commissioners will, will hold a retreat and, and figure things out and then um, I'm hoping that that final plan will be done uh, early in the coming year before town meeting day for sure so it, so you'll be seeing that all over town once it comes out so that's the goal mm -hmm. great thanks yeah. it's really interesting the, the last strategic plan in 2009 was all about getting a building uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. you know, just everything and just you know everything they had gone through at that point and then you know mm -hmm. what happened two years later yeah. after we showed up we're in a really fortunate position because we don't have a, a real pressing need like that. We don't need to launch a big capital campaign. We don't need to worry about a building. So this really is more of an opportunity to just say, hey, what does the community want from their library? Are they happy with things as they are? Is there something that we're missing that they'd really like to see? Uh, so uh, That's so, brilliant. It's just so nice to be able to do that. Yeah, we're, it's, a, it's a very good position to be in. So we're just listening and, and getting input from, from the community at this point. Penny, when we talked earlier, you mentioned that you enjoyed some of the movement classes, which I've never taken advantage of. Yeah, I come to all of the movement classes, and, and now there are not so many. And I was wondering, uh, actually, my question is two parts. Is it because there aren't people available to teach, the funds are not there, or it just hasn't ramped up yet? So there actually are two right now. Uh, there's the chair yoga class, which is a Zoom-based class, and, and that might be part of what the shift was, was that that, that shifted to Zoom during uh, right. the closure, but, uh, but people like it on Zoom, and, and we're going to keep that one here. And then there's another class that it's, it's being advertised as an arthritis right. exercise class, mm -hmm. but it is open to anybody who might want a lower impact movement class. Uh, and that's on Wednesday mornings this fall. Yeah, so if you're interested, that might be a good one to check out. But um, uh, so those are the two we're offering right now. But we would, if we if we do, uh, we would be open to adding to it if we uh, if we did find a good. It is about finding a good uh, instructor, really. Is what yeah. it comes down to. Well, in the past, we've had um, Tai Chi and mm -hmm. Qigong, uh, local instructors, and um, some yoga and. Mm -hmm some line dancing and you know, yeah. all these kinds of things. So I would be interested in having something every day. 
mm-hmm. if that was possible, <laughs> just for me. <laughs> and so the, the other part of that question is, what about space? I, I don't know how the steel room is mm-hmm. allocated, the, the use is allocated. And is there any expansion space in the basement? Because the salad room is lovely, but it's not so good when you're trying to have a group of people doing something physical. Yeah. Well, the basement has been retrofitted to deal with flood mediation. So it's it's really not a usable, it's kind of, it got raised up pretty high, so it's very cool feeling. Oh, Funny. Yes, yeah, so that's no. kind of interesting if you're ever down there. Um, Hi, welcome. Um, and the steel room is available when we can when we can get it, but we're we're in competition with everybody else who wants to use it. We don't get priority for being the library. So, but it is an option for us to occasionally use the steel room. Our our honeybee steel band is actually going to be performing in this room on October eighth, and I'm really excited for that program. If anyone's looking for a very lively music program with people dressed as honeybees, <laughs> so, it should be a blast. Yeah. Our charges classes are also available at the senior center. Right. It's the same classes too. And I, I haven't taken part in them, but I've observed them, and they look wonderful. Like just different, you know, way she's got people mm-hmm. moving and different, you know, mm-hmm. um, movement of weights and everything else. So, you know. Hello, my name's Ann, and we would love it if you came and sat up here, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it, it's sort of apropos because we have the chair of the select board running it walking in and we have another select board member. One of the things that um, I have had people ask me about, and this isn't as much about programming, but as you know, we think about the future is um, how, uh, you know, since it's a, it's a Waterbury library and we have people from other communities who use the library mm-hmm. on a regular basis, mm-hmm. is, um, is how, um, you know, is there any um, contribution or something like that um, and I, I should know the answer to that question because yeah. I should have, you know, read the yeah. town report front and center all the way through, <laughs> but I haven't. Yeah. I'll acknowledge that. So if, if, if people want to be members of the library and have uh, borrowing privileges, they do have to uh, pay an annual fee. It's $25 a year, so I feel like that's a steal. That's <laughs> yeah. very good. We don't, we don't ask folks who are coming to programs where they're coming from. That's just been by, and, and in fact, during COVID, when all of our programming went on to Zoom, uh, we started, we have somebody who comes to the writers group from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so that is, that is something that I think has always been a little bit of a, a question mark is how, you know, should we be asking for payment for folks who are not from Waterbury? Is it, is it entirely a community library or, or are we, open to you know understanding that we're going to be doing this for the community anyway it's okay to, to have other folks drop mm-hmm. in um, i will say we have an amazing uh friends of the library group that does fundraising for us uh so that's been uh, a wonderful way to uh you know things like with the tourists who drop in and use the bathrooms they'll frequently put a little bit of money in the the friends jar or they'll they'll buy a book from the friends book sale um and uh, Maureen's been doing a great job with uh, finding some new ways to get the friends out into the community and do a little bit more fundraising. And I think there's a, a lot of potential there to to do some uh, to maybe do some uh, merchandising for the library since mm-hmm. it's becoming such a hot place that people want to be. <laughs> Why not sell Waterbury Public Library hats and T-shirts and, and things like that? So um, the farmers market twice this year just to, 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 to took the book sale on the road. And it was, oh, it was that's great. great. It was really people were just they wanted to chat about libraries and people who were from out of town love books and yeah. they just want to talk mm-hmm. about their library and it was fun. It was a great way to get us out there. What and, a good idea! Yeah, it was it was fun. It kept raining on Thursdays, but you know, <laughs> yes. we were cursed on Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do they pay a, uh, an annual twenty five dollar membership fee? Is yeah. That, yeah, it's an annual membership fee, and that and I know that sounds low, but that recently was was raised from an even. It was fifteen dollars for many many years. So uh, so and that most people pay it very happily. And, and yeah, we have a lot of users from Moortown, uh, from Bolton, even from as far as Richmond. We have folks from Montpelier who you know happen to come through. So we do have a lot of people who, who take advantage of that. Duxbury residents have a unique situation because they don't have their own library. We're kind of their library, so if they, they pay the $25 fee, they can be reimbursed by the town of Duxbury for that uh, because they don't have a library there. So uh, so we have a lot of Duxbury users who do that. Uh, so they pay us, but then they, they pay us and then they don't get their money back from Duxbury. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks. 
Haley, you were in sort of a really cool position to hear people's reaction to what's going on and what they like and yeah. you know what might rub their fur the wrong way. Um, what is your sense of that? I mean, That's, it's funny. I feel like most of the feedback that I've received has been about like in-person events. I think like moving back, kind of what you were speaking about, moving back into less virtual events and more in-person programming, which I feel like we have been ramping up. Um, and it's so nice to have the garden space and be able to get outside, things yes. like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's the most feedback that I get is about, yeah, just like programming and wanting more programming, yes. which is really positive. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. excellent. I just want a little comment. Um, as much as I love libraries, I'm probably not a good user, although when I was younger, I was a heavy user of libraries. But since the internet, I think I search, I think I'm a typical person, I search a lot of things on the internet that I formally would normally do in a library. And I think I look at the Waterbury Library and the things that I like are the events. I think mm -hmm. it's really kind of important that, because it's something different, you know. I'm, I'm probably not going to check out too many books here. You know, I'm either going to buy a book. It's like, for instance, I was over at Restore, and they have in their book section, if everyone's familiar with Restore, it's kind of like, you know, you could get for the month of September a, a box full, you know, like a carry box for a dollar. Um, of as many books over people are interested in <laughs> the end of the month. That's a really good deal. For, and they have some, you know, it's not something you're going to get. Like if you're going to get a travel book, it's going to be something that's going to be 10 years old or something. But there are tons of great biographies, cooking, and I guess I, I wind up, I find more things at bargain places such as yard sales mm -hmm. and stuff like that because everyone wants to, like, you know, to me, what, unless it's something I love, a book, I don't keep, don't want to keep it. And I think there are so many ways, and I guess, you know, to me the library is kind of a, a resource, the kind of things, you know, I do check as things like come in, look at the consumer reports when I want to buy something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I rarely check out, I, I bet you I haven't checked out a book in 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I think maybe I'm somewhat typical, but Maybe I'm not. There are other people making you other. I'll give a weird, just different perspective. So my name's Alyssa Johnson. Uh, Teresa said I own the select board, which I will say was made possible by the library because I printed my <laughs> petition to run at the library because I did not own a printer at the time. Um, and then got waived because of COVID. So I will say, you know, certainly I'm really for I have a computer, all these things, but I do think that like having just a public space, someone can go print. Um, mm -hmm. One of my previous roles in town was also working with Revitalizing Waterbury, which does a lot of similar kind of programming for the community. Um, and so two things that stick out to me is just really robust programming at the library. We all have talked about it, but in particular, um, Revitalizing Waterbury has a community event calendar, and I would say the proportion of events on that calendar that are from the library is often quite high, um, mm -hmm. but just it's one of those like places you can always look to um, for programming. And just folks have touched on, but the spaces, having um, the smaller meeting rooms for folks. We mm -hmm. had a guest coming to a meeting recently who needed to take a separate meeting, not in this room before, and so the fact that there is bookable private spaces. I mean, suggested municipal manager search in the cell room, thank you. Um, so I just want, you know, we have some of those spaces in the community, but I think they are really important and it's often um, requests and inquiries I got in that kind of RW hat. Yeah, uh, I like the idea of thinking about the technical resources. As you said, relying on the printer um, I know that there are other things here that people come and are able to take advantage of. I am one of the people that needs technical assistance and rather than drive my son completely <laughs> mad, <laughs> I come in and ask for help. And it's just for me, it's what, for what I am trying to accomplish, but it is so nice to be able to do that. It's just remarkable. I'm curious how many people do take advantage of that. Oh, quite a few. So, um, so what Anne's referring to is that one of our we have a tech librarian who you can book time with one-on-one -on -one time to sit down and get a 
uh, tech support with. And I, I'd say in a given week, he probably sits down with about six people, and he'll sit for a solid hour yes. with somebody. He'll give you a lot of time. And then I'll say that on a smaller scale, Haley, myself, and whoever happens to be running the, the help desk will, will be helping people on the fly all the time or using the public computers or, mm -hmm. or trying to print something from their phone or something along those lines. So, uh, so it's, uh, you know, the library really is, it, we, we are trying to, to, you know, help folks out uh, kind of that digital divide situation. There are still yes. a lot of people out there who, who don't necessarily have access to the technology or the expertise with the technology exactly. or, or these days a printer <laughs> or something along those lines. Um, and uh, the number of people who are sitting in their cars using our Wi-Fi when I get to yes. work at mm -hmm. 9 in the morning yeah. would surprise yeah. you, I think. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Mm -hmm. Rachel, you need to advertise that a lot. Like I found that out through you. Like mm -hmm. you know, I I've, I've been having some problems with, and I'm gonna contact Kyle to you know have him mm -hmm. take a look at what's what's going on. You know, you I was just gonna bring it to you know small dog and you know bear. But what I said, let me. It could be something really somewhat tech savvy, but nowadays everything's so. Mm -hmm. You know, can be very daunting sometimes, <laughs> even if you are tech savvy. And it's a really good resource for those people. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of people in town who are not, especially the senior generation, which I yes. am one, you know, yeah. who are not that tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, you know, that's a really important, you know, maybe I'm a little new school because I don't necessarily think, I think a lot of people are less and less borrowing books, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I would say we have we still have a lot of people borrowing books. Um, our numbers of our circulation numbers. Uh, 2019 was actually the the busiest year this library ever had, and then of course shortly after that the library had to close. But our circulation numbers are creepy, very much close to the 2019 numbers again. Um, what we have seen that has changed is. Uh, uh, during our closure, a lot of people learned to use Libby, and, mm -hmm. and people who, who maybe never would have thought they'd be comfortable with audiobooks <laughs> or with ebooks uh, did get comfortable with that. Uh, interesting thing is, uh, those people aren't going away. They're still using Libby and they're still using the audio and ebooks, but they're also coming back to the library and they're getting physical books as well. So it's, it's, I, it's, it's interesting to me that that number of of ebook users hasn't really dropped down very much, but the number of, of traditional book users has gone back up. So I think that there are a lot of, it, I was very, um, kind of surprised, but pleased when we did a, a community survey, we've had 100 responses so far, um, and the number one thing people think the library should prioritize is still books. <laughs> they, there are, a lot of our users are still very interested in traditional books, um, even as opposed to ebooks and audiobooks. Do you have any number contract from say like 20 years ago when more Ooh. when the internet wasn't as yeah. prevalent? Yeah, I I would have to. I, I'm sure I could dig up those numbers. I That'd be have really them interesting. In my fingers, but because I know years ago I used to use the library quite a bit, yeah. you know, but because mm -hmm. you didn't have that research ability. Yeah. But nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a lot easier going on the internet in your sweatpants and mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I love about it is that it's not an either or proposition. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who will always be more comfortable with this, you know, the book in, in their hands, but there are many people, and I, I feel that what the library doing is doing is so democratizing because there are people who simply can't afford a computer, mm -hmm. and that they have that access yeah. is just, I think terribly important. Yeah. And along those lines, the uh, um, the uh, borrowing from other uh, sources. Mm -hmm. my, I haven't used it, but my husband has had wonderful success for several years with getting things through interlibrary loan, and it's yes. so efficient and it's so quick. Really nice job, nice job. Um, what is the source now, since we don't have a library, don't have a newspaper anymore, what's the source going to be for the programming, seeing what the programming is, besides having the newsletter? Um, yeah, the newsletter is probably your best way to see everything. Um, major, major programs get posted to Front Porch Forum. Right. The Waterbury Roundabout does pick up uh, our, our program information as well. And uh, while they aren't going to be printing the Waterbury Reader anymore, you can still get the Waterbury Roundabout uh, emails, which is, which is helpful. 
Um, those are really the best sources. We, we, major items, we, we uh, do ads on WDEV. Um, and of course, we, most of our events we post on our Facebook page. Um, and then some of our events we post on Instagram as well. So uh, those are those are most of our sources. But I really, I mean, I'll make sure that you get the newsletter because that's going to be your very best method of getting that information. And our website too. Yeah, yes, yeah. our website is very up to date with with the oh, program okay. information as well. So that's always worth checking out. Mm -hmm. I was wondering because there's been a, you know a proliferation of the little community library boxes around town. If that had any uh, impact on your um, visits or the people using, yeah, I really don't think so. Um, I think that the you know it's interesting. I do think there are those readers out there who their way of reading is what they come across, and, and those are the type of people who who take what they find out of a little free library or out of a take a book, leave a bookshelf, or something along those lines. Uh, what we see are, are really passionate readers who, who read a lot and who have requests and who have things that they want to get their hands on. Yeah, so, um, so, so I think that um, we see some of those, those types of folks, and especially our book sale probably has more overlap with the, the uh, our book sales by donation, so uh, people just pay whatever they feel comfortable with. Um, and they pay nicely. We make a lot of money off of that book sale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that the, the little free libraries, they're, they're, so, they're so small and they're so hit or miss that yeah. I don't think that uh, the library users, Maureen might have a sense of that too. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think it's, if you, you know, somebody's reading, you know, they have a favorite author and they're, they're working their way through the series, they're not going to go to the little libraries and be like, fine, they're going to come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I also know that Penny and I both get the little free libraries <laughs> and leave books there. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's what I'm always looking to do. You know, I wish I could steal myself. I cannot go to that place that you mentioned that you can get the <laughs> bucket of books because that would just ruin me. I already have too many books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and so I'm always looking, you know, I'm driving by the little free libraries saying, do they have room for a few more? You know, that's like in the whole the... idea is like buy a book. You know, it's so cheap. Their books are like yeah. soft covers, 50 cents, hard yeah. covers. Yes, I know, you know, sometimes it's something you're interested in. Like I get a lot of cookbooks. I yes. like cooking like a lot of international things. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go and go to Barnes and Noble and pay you right. know oh. twenty five dollars for a book, but yeah. you know if you get it at, at the uh, restore, you know for a fifty cent or a dollar, yeah. it's a bargain. Yes, indeed. And, oh, or if yeah. you get it at the library, it's free. Yes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Our, but you have to give it back. Right. <laughs> our, oh, there's no fines anymore. There's yeah. no fines. No fines. Yeah. So. Um, our, uh, our book sale volunteers actually takes uh, some of the rejected books from our book sale and brings them to the Little Free Library. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of this like food yeah, system. Yeah, a funnel. Yeah, yes. and eventually that's they funny. end up in the Little Well, I was surprised when I was in the Senior Center the other day. There's a huge table of books there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's new since I was in last. They're just trying to clean out the basement. And so they decided to have a little sale. and. Just it's more okay. to clean out the space because there's so much stuff from <coughs> the basement down there. So it's just trying to kind of push things around. It's um, not in competition with this. Well, I'm <laughs> <bag full. laughs> I know. One of the things that I wasn't as much aware of, and I think, um, I don't remember if it was you or Judy or somebody who posted it recently about the things that you can borrow mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you know, like yes. uh, snowshoes or <laughs> like, you know. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's that something that's really interesting. Yeah. That and that's actually something I'd love to hear from from you folks as to are there like what do you see as the kind of most useful things for that? Because I'm always looking to add to that collection. So um, so the telescope's hugely popular. The snowshoes are very popular, and, and those are the kinds of things that I think are great because they're the type of thing that it's 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 a little bit expensive. It's something that maybe you're going to use. If you're somebody who's not an avid snowshoer, you're going to try it out once in the winter and, and not necessarily do it all the time. Um, and we have some, uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, cake pans that are funny shapes, things like that. Uh, some, some board games, um, some craft type items, a felting kit. You, what, what do you think? What, what's worth a kilowatt meter? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Wood pile, what do you call that thing? Oh, the um, moisture meter. Moisture meter to see if your wood is, ah. is ready to burn. So that's the kind of thing you only need once a year, whatever you bring your wood in. 
Um, uh, somebody just, crazy, somebody just donated a very elaborate graphing calculator. Oh, that, that. Yeah, it's not in the collection. Yeah, I just got it. it. So, did anyone, did folks have thoughts on the types of things that you think, boy, once a year I need blank. I'd love to be able to go to the library and get it instead of having to to rent it or buy it or <laughs> not thoughts on that. I think, like, well, it's my bent and I probably even could donate. Would be like fishing poles. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of yeah. young fans, like on free fishing day, mm -hmm. you know, if they, they're limited, they don't have, they don't want to go out and spend $25 for a fishing pole. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, I would say that's what kept me from being a juvenile delinquent <laughs> was going fishing when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's both for adults and kids, but I think, you know, sometimes, especially people on lower incomes just don't have the money for something. And we're right next to, you know, Winooski and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. I think it would be something that would be appreciated for people who just don't want to maybe invest because they don't use it only but once or twice a year. Yeah. One of the things that um, at my friend's library that she lives in, uh, the town of Hartford, but there's several little libraries in the town of Hartford, they have um, uh, purchased like uh, season's passes to, mm -hmm. you know, various like bins or you know various things like that. Shelburne Museum, they have. Yeah, we have. We have oh, boy. which I was amazed. We have a lot of museum passes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't know that. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, that's part of this is great because you're know, helping me to figure out. Boy, I need to promote some of this stuff a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so in particular, state parks. I don't know if you do or don't, or if that's offered. But given that we have two literally in town, mm -hmm. I know like for me, it's worth it to get the whole state park wide one but yeah. there was something in town yeah um on adjacent recreation i love to cross country ski here i don't know if the schools already do that but if not again it's like this is a great flat field for folks to try and we often do the lights in the winter so um yeah that's true mm -hmm. i i know you know folks that might be a more complicated rental which i understand <laughs> so that's not a that's a look into it and i understand mm -hmm. either way but it is also right here but apropos i love seeing kids out here sledding in the mm -hmm. winter. And if they built those steps, <laughs> that would help. I mean, mm -hmm. those steps down, down the hill? Yeah. yeah. That's our dream. That's how yeah. 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 that's, that's only more of a problem than an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, but inevitably you go down. And it's yeah. like, it's okay. This is going to be fun. I have a club over one. And walk up the driveway. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Um, what is it that people play on the tennis courts, but it's not? Oh, pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. Pickleball. Yeah. Like, that's one thing I want to learn how to play. I don't know how to play. Is so there a pickleball like, court in town? Uh, I think that, I don't know, but somebody told me that tennis courts are marked for pickleball as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know that's the tennis yeah. I think that's often the thing. They use the same court, so that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, so maybe that's the years. recreation committee. To oh, I'm sure it is. That's well. Yeah. yeah. But, but, no, but like, I'm not. I don't yeah. know if I would, if I would like really take it up. So I don't want to run by some Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. More and more seniors, or even people of some age, are playing pickleball. You know, like people. I used to be an avid tennis player, mm -hmm. and you know, when you get older, you know, pickleball is just you know. Especially playing singles is just a little bit more accommodating thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. smaller court, stuff's not as exactly. heavy as, yeah. It looks fun, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Is it? Yeah. If, if you have thoughts about that after this meeting, because that's an area that I think that we are always, you know, curious, like what's going to circulate in the library, of, we call it the library of things, what, what kinds of things do people want? Send them my way, because that's, that's an area that I'd like to get some suggestions in. So, like on your on the website, I should probably know this, but does it uh, like have a list of uh, items you can borrow? Well, there's, a, like there's a page of library of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and actually, you can search the catalog too, which is which is oh, great, so huh? that you can bring up those items. Oh, well, you made a list. Get a whole list. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's just the non-traditional way that I think you support the community. And I think a lot of people, I hate to say, just don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm chair of the select board. Some of the things I didn't know know about what I didn't know about the park pass, you know, like Shower mm -hmm. Museum and stuff like that. You know, I knew about the telescope and mm -hmm. snowshoes and stuff, and I have all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's neat to know that, and some people just don't even think to ask. They don't think of that as a library function. Mm -hmm. 
the um, small, what are they, 35 millimeter slide projector? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have access to one of those. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then also something that still plays tapes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Both VHS and, and, and audio, the VHS audio was tapes. The scar yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I have to attic. Yeah, or you've got them in the attic and know where yeah. to hook them up. They don't go with what you've got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something that can convert them to DVDs. Perhaps. Yeah. Or, <laughs> say, yeah. or digital formats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, a converter would be. A converter. Cool. I, that just, that just popped into my mind. Oh, gosh. That. Yeah. that would be nice. Would be, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great ideas. <laughs> this is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me it's just more, I don't know how you advertise it better, but making the community more aware of you. I know you try doing that, but it, it's a it's a hard reach sometimes. You know? mm -hmm. That's a great question. How do you get information about what's going on in the community? What are your preferred? Front porch form. The front porch form, form is what I look at. Yeah. 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 I get little circulars at the, at the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm old school. <laughs> One minute you're old school, the next oh, minute no, you're I new can, school. I can be very like, I can go from old school to new school. But I love the community bulletin boards. I think they're really, uh, you know, especially, you know, the old, you know, country stores where have yeah. the big bulletin, you know, I just love looking at it. I found some neat, really, events around the state, you know, just by looking at some of those community bulletin boards. Does Front Porch Forum operate so that you could have a weekly posting of yeah, stuff? We can post, well, we can post pretty much whenever we want. They do limit. They don't let us post. They don't let us spam right. Front Porch Forum. <laughs> but, uh, but between all of us, we can post pretty much whenever <laughs> we want. So we mostly use it to promote events. But this is making me think that, you know, maybe it makes sense to kind of use it to just promote. <laughs> Promote availability. Something we cool have snowshoes, we have yeah. telescopes. Yes. Or even link to your newsletter. I was I am also don't think I'm on the yeah. newsletter list yeah. just because I never thought to click subscribe and so yeah. if that showed up in a front porch forum, I would. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. I also say I follow your social media. I don't know who does the book drop update. I do look at them. Mm -hmm. I also will say though I think like I'm a pretty weird Venn diagram who's like very into the library and also on social media and I don't know who else exists in that Venn diagram but I'm there. <laughs> Which is just to say I share that to say like I do look at it. I don't know that I'm necessarily encouraging investing more time and effort into it but I do at least see it. The Instagram's been popular. It's mm -hmm. been more and more popular so that's been that's been great and yeah it is fun to do those book drops. We take a picture of just all the items that we pull out of the book drop in the morning because it's oh. kind of fun oh, just to fun. see what people oh, are fun. returning and what's going on at the library. Oh, like <laughs> what kinds of things do they put in there? Yeah, well, it's mostly books, but oh, sometimes, few. sometimes there's other stuff too. Yeah. 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 Well, well, actually, actually, once it was a squash, you remember that? A squash? Is that what you said? I'm surprised you haven't been finding zucchini. <laughs> and then we do find something very odd like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Luckily we do. I love our, our new book drop. I don't know if folks noticed, but there used to be a very ugly green one out there that very much looked like a trash can. So this is we don't get as much trash in the home. <laughs> That's a plus. Well, I am so impressed and uh, this has been fun and I and I know that you all really appreciate your taking the time and talking to us and giving us ideas. I thought this was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's really nice to know the support that we have in this community. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that the um, book group is going to stop being on Zoom and be live? Uh, it's, they, uh, the, the, the book group members who are regular goers love it and love being on Zoom. So I think we're, that group is staying on Zoom, but we are hoping to launch a new book group that will be an in-person book group, and the theme of that book group is, is probably going to be banned books. Uh, so if that interests you, I think that's going to be a really interesting group. Uh, so watch for that. Yeah. yeah. And then shameless community notes. I believe Bridgeside Books has an in-person book. Yes, and that, that's a very active book group if that is in-person. But I think that the No Pressure book group which I will, I will say is a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we all like to be home in our pajamas <laughs> while we're on it, so yeah. Something to be sure about that. <laughs> I know, there is, I yeah. agree. Yeah.
um, so you just brought up the topic of banned books. I'm just curious if you've had any like people coming in and you know with complaints about certain books or wanting to know if no. anything's been taken off the shelf. No, this this community is so supportive. People, it, we have a really nice banned books display right now. Yeah, it's they have a it's on really band, lovely. Band books, I and mostly, I get we get a lot of comments from people saying, "Wow, I can't believe yeah. people would ban those books." So. Uh, so um, I've not I've not received any challenges. Uh, the, I think I'm really impressed with Waterbury. It's, it's a community of readers and, and very passionate people, and I, it's been really nice to get that support. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering that it's made popped into my head about is there any um, sort of connection with the library? Librarians, libraries at our schools. Um, yeah. I wondered about that mm -hmm. too. Yep, yeah. not as much as there should be because in recent years, with they, the, I think the school librarians have been pretty overwhelmed <laughs> with, with what they've been dealing with with the pandemic. Uh, but we do talk pretty regularly, especially with the Cross at Brook Middle School librarians. And um, actually, just today, uh, Cynthia and I, the children's librarian, were talking about making more of a concerted effort to have more of a relationship with them. But this past year, we did do, we received a grant that was pretty cool that allowed us to uh, give out um, books that dealt with social emotional learning topics to kids in all the schools. And so we connected with the librarians to help us figure out the best way to do that and to help us choose the books. Um, and then Cynthia made a little video of herself, introducing herself, talking about the library, talking about the books and then the books went out to the kids. And so uh, what was really fun about that was then when we started our summer reading program and kids started coming in to, to see Cynthia for summer reading, they said, I saw you in the video. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a good way to connect with them at a point when we weren't really allowed to go into the schools mm -hmm. and, and connect with them. But we're hoping that this year with, with things kind of being a little bit more normal with the schools, we'll, we'll be having more back and forth with the, the school librarians. You just mentioned something, <laughs> you know, another thing on your plate. And that is grant applications. Mm -hmm. Do you do that much? Or? Um, we we had we've just come out of a period where we uh, had a lot of, of major grants going on. Um, like the town libraries received ARPA funding, um, much smaller scale ARPA funding, which was which came to us through the Department of Libraries, and uh, most of that was spent on some technology projects. Mm -hmm some some uh, digital books because that was a big push uh, for ARPA, things like that. Um, and actually purchased our new book drop <laughs> and some other some other major kind of uh, facilities items like that. Um, and we just closed uh, the, the, the children's library grant we just closed was a, a, a over $5,000 from the Vermont Children's Trust Fund. So that was a really, really nice grant that allowed us to really shore up our children's book collection and let, let us buy some um, very cool children's book technology uh, launch pads, which these are these little learning tablets that, that we can loan out to kids, Great. and um, wonder books, which are talking books, books that read the story to you, which are really cool. Um, and uh, so we, we have some grants that we receive just about every year from the Department of Libraries that support things like the ILL service, which is a, a career service that runs through Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, support our summer reading program, things like that. And then other grants that we apply for um, when you know something interesting comes along. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we are always on the lookout for potential. Uh, we're very successful with getting grants too, I will say. So I think we have very strong um, grant writing skills on staff, which is really nice. Right. Mm -hmm. I, that just made me think when you said ILA or whatever the initials were, uh, yeah, yeah. English language learners. Do you have um, any resources here for folks who are earning, uh, learning English as their we, second language? We don't have a lot. We have a little bit. Um, we don't have a lot, and we don't have a staff member who's really skilled in that area. So that's that's an area that we could definitely uh, put some energy into. I didn't know what the need yeah. is in our community. But no, I know off and question. on we've had people who yeah. have immigrated um, to the country and have moved to our area. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's something you um, might learn about more with the connection with the schools because yeah. they will be aware of the people right. who might need that right. um, mm -hmm. kind of support in the community. Yeah. And that would be a really a good option for people during the daytime. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, in another city, um, I met at the library with some moms after their kiddos got to school and they were from the Middle East and we went to the grocery store together, we went to the drugstore together. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. we, they talked about 
how do you work the washing machine and what kind of soap? You got the soap in the box, you got the soap in the bottle, you got the soap in the little things, what do you use? Yeah. And that kind of thing. And, that would, and you have to be available during the day to do that. So that would be an outreach perhaps for people who are available during the day. Yeah. Makes me also, when, that just made me think of, um, you know, you have a Bell Basic Ed right across the street mm -hmm. and I was just, it, or do you have connections? Uh, there a little bit. I've talked to them a little. They we promote them a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, they pr promote some of our programs. So we've done that. But yeah. and I think they use our space sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How many interlibrary transfers do you have either per month or per year? Oh boy, is it, is it a lot? It is, is a lot. Is it it's really? a lot. Yeah. Um, do you have a guess? I'm trying to think. Like Fifty books go in and out every week. Yeah. Like we send fifty wow. every week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would yeah, never it's, it's a lot, and then there's even more that there's a, at least a handful more that go out through mail yeah, too. True. That's so it is, it is, it's, it's pretty significant. Um, for folks who don't know, we're part of a consortium, the Catamount Library mm -hmm. Consortium. Yeah. So our catalog is a shared catalog with a number of other libraries in Vermont. So it's really easy and convenient for people to place holds on books that are at other libraries. Uh, so I think that's something we do really, really well, and mm -hmm. it's thanks to that mm -hmm. consortium and thanks to the support that the State Department of Libraries provides mm -hmm. with that courier service. So a little courier van drives from library <laughs> to library to library with little bins of books. <laughs> <laughs> and twice a week they come and they, they drop off bins and they pick up bins, so it's, it's pretty cool. And you even go beyond that, too. I know a few times yeah. I've asked for books that were not within that um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. consortium. And you still got them. Yep, we will. It'll <laughs> take a little bit longer, but we'll do, we'll mail things back and forth to libraries that are further away, too. So mm -hmm. it's a really, and that is supported by a grant um, from the Department of Libraries, so, the, the, so that's really nice because a lot of, that can get expensive, but mm -hmm. a lot of that is covered from the state. Mm -hmm. So right. that's that's a really, and that's something that, uh, I think, Anne, you said you're a big user of the ILL. A lot of people do like, like that service a lot. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to ask, um, the uh, Strategic Planning Committee talk a lot about reaching non-users. You know, people are here because you, you come to the library, you like the library, whatever, but there's a lot of people that don't use it. And I know the farmer's market, Margaret was walking around and just <laughs> grabbing people. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if there's groups like that, like people that were missing, like how do we connect to these people? And are there groups that, you know, we're not serving that we should be like the, you know, I think it's the it's the services people think, especially older people think of libraries in a much different way. They they don't think of it as events and borrowing things. They think of it as getting a book. And again, I think there are so many sources. There are so many books out there. John Walter probably hates this, you know, where you know we should be recycling all all these books <laughs> and stuff like that. But you know, it's. It's, it's a hard task, and I, it's a combination of, I'm not a huge social media person, but it's a combination of social media, you know, more more outreach events, you know, having like a, a, an open house, you know, a pizza and something open house, you know, get to know your library, there's all kinds of, you know, and, and some, some of those people are just never gonna come, and it, it's, but to at least know put the thing up on the laundromat on their bulletin board, you know, it's yeah. places that they, that, you know, that there are some people who never open up social media and you have to go very old school. Yeah. And people don't think about that. Put a better sign up front. We talked about that. Better I really loved your idea about going to the farmer's market with the books too. I think that's a great that's idea. A great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Is the literacy project for adults Active anywhere in the area? Literacy project for adults? Mm -hmm. Like adult basic education? Yeah, across the street yeah. is the it's adult basic education office. So they, they do those, and they do do some, some of that here as far as advertising and bringing people in. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they're pretty, I think they're pretty active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
In terms of outreach, my general sense of Waterbury is Waterbury has a ton of awesome, really specific, different types of organizations. So if you're into mountain biking, there is a group. If you're into yes. biking, there's a group. If you're into the library, you're in this room, and there's a group. Um, and so just, I feel like most of the, um, one, it's a hard and time intensive task. So like, it's something we on the select board think about. And like, again, it's just, it's hard and it takes a lot of time and resources. So I just want to acknowledge that to like get out of our bubbles. But I think if you can find liaisons in those other groups to mm -hmm. share with that other network yes. of, you know, even yeah. like people who yep. work in the restaurants in town mm -hmm. is a network. People who yeah. mountain bike is a network. Um, the more you can get into those different other places that might not overlap, um, that's where I feel like I've had a lot of success in kind of getting things beyond. Yeah. I'm going to say the local municipal government circle, which, you know, <laughs> is a wonderful <laughs> circle, but often kind of the same. One of the things that I appreciated is that um, uh, Rachel and her predecessor were um, are both members of the Waterbury Rotary Club, and so that's also made, mm -hmm. enabled some connections in the community that might not have mm -hmm. otherwise happened. That's and good. So that's um, I think that's been really um, really nice, mm -hmm. really nice to have you there, and really nice to have that connection and. I know I walked in with a book and I said, do you, you have any of these here? <laughs> then, oh, maybe I'll put it in the book sale, you know? It's like, um, so, you know, they're, um, I, I think I appreciate that. Also, just because it hasn't been said, I just want to say, like, really acknowledge the library as a universal accessible place in the community. Just mm -hmm. every time we're thinking about a public outreach survey, where to put a poster. I mean, even our municipal offices are wonderful. They're open to standard business hours, and you all have more extended hours on some nights. So just if there's something that we're trying to get out to the community, just knowing that, like, those bulletin boards, and I feel like, knock on wood, not committing you for the future, but I've never had the library say no to, like, can this other strategic planning survey also live in the library? Um, so I just think that's really important, and also appreciate just, like, the bulletin boards and the little gallery space. I know there was just a little opening um, that I wasn't able to make, but just two other things I really liked. When you said accessible, it made me think of there are so many places in a, a community that has the age on it that ours does that are not physically accessible to people. The whole library. And so, exactly. Um, so uh, I appreciate the fact that it's a space where people who have um, physical mobility challenges are able to s so easily access and the, um, uh, you know, the design of the, even the design of the parking lot and, you know, the ease of access to the door and stuff like that is, um, is really nice. So I appreciate that because there's, there's times when you need to be able to meet with somebody and you, well, what about the library? <laughs> yeah. Okay, last chance. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this, so yeah. I appreciate it. And I apologize for being late. I, I had my calendar being started at 6.30, I thought it was early. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming. It's been great to get your input. It's really interesting. Thank you all. This was great. Thank you, and thank you for all what you do for the community. It's a really important resource. Sometimes you, You'll hear the complaints a lot quicker than you will. <laughs> Maybe we should establish a library appreciation day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and people drop off and yeah. some flowers. And, yeah. I mean, we just need to cancel appreciation month. We, we should do a library month. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, future, future items. <laughs> well, thank you. Like I said, we feel very strongly about this community. Mm -hmm. It's a great, it's a great place to, to be a library. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a much better space. People. That's what I do. I see some pictures. Oh, in it. <laughs> oh. It, it was. It was like. I, I always said I never knew how to operate. I remember it was one of my job at USDA. We donated a bunch. You know, we have surplus furniture, and they said, "Yeah, bring it on." You know, they had. You know, and you look at what kind of furniture you have today. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm sure you got rid of all our old shows. <laughs> Well, when, when this lady was talking about the smell, I'm like, you didn't feel that way when you walked into the old library. The smell smelled exactly like an old building with lots of old books and old stuff, and it smelled like it felt so musty. And actually, there was probably a lot of mold. Yeah. 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 All right, nice to see you all. Thank you. Thank you.